I think uh, let's just get started. Um, we are recording this, so I think if a few folks join late, uh, we'll be posting the video uh, later as well. And also, um, if we go through stuff relatively quickly, you can also uh, obviously ask questions as we go through, or also we'll be posting the video replay of this webinar later as well uh, for reference. So just to get started, again, I mentioned earlier, I'm Carlo, COO and co-founder of Hangbot. So thanks everyone for joining today. Um, for this webinar, we're gonna have two parts to the webinar. So first, I'll show you how to set up a market making trading bot. So quant and automated trading is a really fast growing way of trading crypto, especially as you all know, crypto markets can move pretty fast, so pretty quickly, and they're always open 24 seven. So we have created Hummingbot, which is an open source trading bot that allows anyone to run professional institutional grade automated trading strategies, such as market making and arbitrage. Uh, for many of our users, Hummingbot has allowed them to kind of explore and get started in this new form of, of trading. And then for the second part of this webinar, I'll provide you an overview of Hummingbot Miner, which is our platform for liquidity mining. And similar to liquidity mining, which, which you may be familiar with in the DeFi, DeFi world, our platform is a way of incentivizing, uh, incentivizing traders who provide uh, liquidity for, uh, for the market. Uh, but in our version, rather than using automated market maker smart contracts, what our platform does is it actually provides token incentives for traders who provide liquidity on centralized exchanges. Uh, we just launched a liquidity mining campaign for uh, Avalanche, AVEX tokens uh, this week. So I'll demo, on, on, uh, I'll demo how you can set up a trading bot and participate in that platform and earn token rewards from the AVEX uh, campaign. Uh, but a few things, uh, before we get started, just a few, a few quick things, uh, a bit of housekeeping. Um, this demo is, is uh, it's not intended to be any kind of financial or investment advice uh, before participating in any kind of trading or liquidity mining. Obviously you should do your own research. I will be showing you some uh, trading settings, bot configurations. I just note that these are solely for demonstration purposes only. If you do wanna get more information and talk with other traders, uh, also ask about, the, about what the parameters are, you're welcome to join our Discord community. We have an active uh, support team that's there 24 seven, but also we have uh, community of, of traders who, who discuss uh, things like training parameters. And so feel free to, to join there if you want to get more information. Uh, with that being said, let's jump right in. So uh, last week we announced a liquidity mining campaign for Avalanche tokens, uh, which kicked off earlier this week. So what the campaign does is it offers token rewards for anyone creating orders and providing liquidity for the AVEX tokens on Binance.com. So I'll explain in more detail what that actually means as we go through this, this webinar. But just to summarize the terms of the campaign, uh, the campaign will be running for six months. The total reward pool is $6,000 equivalent uh, per, per month. So $36,000 over the six month period. Um, and it will, uh, in this first week only, uh, it will only include the three pairs so far. So it will be, uh, those rewards will be uh, split between the AVAX BTC, uh, USDT, and BNB trading pairs. So you can see here the weekly rewards that we've kind of allocated for each pair. And that's the total amount of rewards that's available uh, to, to, to the participants. Uh, starting from week two onwards, we will be adding the Turkish Lira pair, pair as well. So that will be, uh, that you, you'll be able to trade in AVAX Turkish Lira tokens on Binance as well and earn rewards for that starting from uh, week two. And in order to earn rewards, so you need to be creating eligible orders uh, in these tokens. So basically buy and sell maker orders. So uh, contributing to order book depth, um, the max spreads is 2%. So that means uh, we'll only be rewarding uh, orders whose spreads fall within 2% uh, uh, or, or, or less. Uh, one other note here, uh, one common question we typically have like um, uh, the, the, the do you uh, require trades to be filled to earn rewards? The answer is actually no. So we're actually providing rewards just for order book depth. 
So even if you have orders and if you don't actually trade, you'll still be earning rewards. Um, uh, we're only uh, providing rewards for uh, order book depth and contributing to, to the order book. So that's kind of the, the summary of terms. So I guess we'll just uh, jump right in and keep, uh, uh, you know, how to participate. So just to take a step back uh, first, uh, in order to participate since on Binance.com, you'll need to have a trading account on Binance.com and that's where you will be doing your trading. So that's where you'll be placing uh, orders from. Um, because uh, we're, we're basically uh, providing incentives for providing orders and order of depth, um, this is something that could be, you wouldn't really want to do this manually. So you wouldn't really want to be constantly uh, updating and checking your orders uh, all the time by hand. So what we've done is we typically use a bot like Hummingbot that could actually automate the trading for you. So that could automate uh, your, your orders depending on market conditions, depending on if your orders are traded or filled, it will adjust kind of what the bot's doing and adjust the orders you're, you're making uh, on your account. Uh, in order for us to basically, so the Hummingbot itself, it's, it's, it's software that uh, you run on your own computer. So either on your own uh, Mac or, or PC, or you can run it on the cloud. So a lot of our, our users run it on the cloud because for um, trading bots, uh, you typically want them running 24 seven. So a lot, a lot of our users uh, will set it up on the cloud or they'll use things like a, a Raspberry Pi uh, just, just to run it so that it's, it's on dedicated kind of computer that's, that's just for, uh, for trading. Uh, in order to give the trading bot authority and access to trade on your account, we'll have to set up API keys. So we'll set up a trade enabled API key that gives it the authority to, uh, to trade on behalf of your account. And again, on, on this part of the process, uh, since you're running the bot on your own computer or on your own cloud server, you're basically in control of your security. So like we, what, um, we as a company, we don't know like what you're actually trading. We don't actually know uh, what you're doing with the bot. Again, because it's open source software that you run on your own machine, it's up to you to kind of control the security. So the next step is our, our Hummingbot mining, miner platform. So what I just said earlier, uh, when you're running the Hummingbot training bot, we actually don't know, know what you're doing with the bot. So in order for us to kind of reward you based on your activity for trading, obviously we need to get that information somehow. So in order for, for you to participate in Hummingbot miner liquidity mining campaigns, you will have to get set up on our Hummingbot miner platform. That one, you will be asked to enter uh, another API key, but in this case, uh, you can enter a read only API key. So that only allows us the system to uh, get your trade data. And, and that's what allows us to determine which rewards you are eligible for and th the rewards you're able to earn. And kind of the last part of this process is uh, every week, once we've kind of accumulated everyone's rewards for the week, we'll pay those out uh, to, to your accounts or to your wallets. So that's kind of a basically quick overview of the whole process in a nutshell. Um, so I'll just go over to actually how to get started and set up the bot and, and sign up and, and uh, get going on Hummingbot Miner. So first, um, if you go to Hummingbot Docs uh, homepage uh, or Docs page, you can see how to install uh, Humming, Hummingbot. So, uh, there's a few different ways. I'm on a Mac, so I'll just go there. Uh, we do have a binary installer. Um, so that's actually, if you go to our site. Uh, so if you wanted to get started, you just hit get started. Download Hummingbot here. And you can see you can actually download the program files and it'll run on your machine. Um, uh, that's currently available now, but we're actually moving towards uh, uh, just uh, uh, discontinuing these, these, these installers. I think in later versions, in uh, the next versions we're releasing in Hummingbot, we're actually adding a lot more functionality that makes it, uh, adds other packages that makes it uh, uh, more efficient to run it using things like Docker. Uh, so that's actually what I'm going to show you right now. Although currently you can do it this way, which is pretty easy, but I'll actually go and show you how to install it using Docker, which is going forward. Uh, what most of our users and what we'll be recommending for, for folks to, to run. Um, the other way of installing it, you could install it from source. So you can basically download it from GitHub. We would 
just recommend that basically for any developers who want to hack on the code and modify the code themselves, uh, for most users, uh, we'll recommend Docker just because it's a lot easier to set up and you, you'll see that uh, as uh, I'll show you. So here, uh, when I clicked on install via Docker, there's a number of commands uh, uh, here. I'll just copy those. What this command will do is it will download uh, a number of like automated scripts to your computer and that will facilitate basically uh, the setting up of, uh, of HubBot. So I'll just open a terminal window. So I've copied those commands. So I'll paste that here and then press enter. So it's downloading the scripts and then right away it's, it's gone ahead and started initiate creating uh, a new HubbingBot instance. So here, um, what version I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna use the default, the latest version. So I just hit enter. I'll give this a name. So this one will be setting up AVAX BTC. So I'll just give that a, a name there. It's going to create um, so a files folders in your computer. So that's where it will save config files and log files. So again, I'll just hit enter there. And then you can see here, it's confirming everything. You can see uh, I will be creating an instance of XPTC. It's using the latest version of HummingBot. Here's the set of file folders that it's going to create. And then I'll just hit yes to continue. It's gonna ask me for a password. And it should be going ahead and setting it up. So there it is. Uh, it's pretty much, I already had this image installed because I had a previous version running of this. Um, so you saw that kind of spun up rather quickly. Uh, when you do it yourself for the first time, it will be downloading the files from Docker. So it'll probably, it's a 500 uh, megabytes. Uh, so it, it will take, you know, maybe a few, few seconds or minutes depending on your speed, but that's basically it. Um, and you can see here, HummingBot is uh, a terminal based uh, program. Again, that's because it's kind of, as of right now, it's, it's intended to kind of be run, be able to run on like cloud servers where, where you can have it running. So that's why it's currently just a command line based program. That being said, we do have plans in the future to add a GUI to make it easier uh, for some users to use. But right now it's a terminal based uh, program. So I'll hit okay. Um, again, you'll see some disclaimers here. Uh, obviously, uh, when you first got started, uh, we'd recommend using some, you know, maybe more conservative, safer settings. And I also just mentioned a few features we have for beginners to help them get started. Uh, we have things like paper trading mode, for example. Uh, what that is is you can actually test out running the bot and simulate trades without actually deploying any crypto or any assets yet. So that's a feature uh, 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 starters can can look into using. Other things are you can probably uh, other things we would recommend are things like starting out with a small amount of crypto first when you get started just to see how the bot trades before. And as you get more comfortable, then you can you can ramp up uh, on what you're trading. So I'll just uh, click through some of these disclaimers. Obviously you should read them. Then I'll set a password for my bot. There, uh, that's it. Uh, let me fix this display. Okay, so that's basically the, the program. So now I've kind of done initial setup uh, and you can see here, uh, here's the kind of the interface. So the top left, there's kind of three panels. The top left, this is what will display the results of your commands. So basically um, when you enter commands, you'll see the outputs uh, on the top left. On the bottom left, that's your in input panel. So that's why we, I'll be typing in commands on, on, on instructing HummingBot what to do. And on the right, you'll start logging a uh, logs from the exchange. So once I start trading, once I connect to an exchange, uh, anytime, like, anytime my orders are refreshing or anytime um, my orders are filled, it will sh be showing on, on the right. Uh, basically that's a, a output from uh, feedback from, from the exchange. Uh, if I go to input uh, panel, if I hit tab, there is an autofill feature. So when you hit tab, you can see kind of the commands that are available to you. Um, the first thing I'll do is I'll connect a Binance uh, account. So if, if I hit connect, and I hope you guys can see this. Uh, let me zoom in a bit more again. 
So you can see here, uh, when I hit connect, it lists the exchanges that we have available in the bot at the moment. So you can see here, uh, I'm gonna be doing uh, a demo on Binance. You can see here, it's currently not connected. So what I'll, I'll do is I will hit connect Binance. And then it will ask me for my uh, Binance API key uh, and Binance uh, API secret. So actually just flipping back to uh, how, how you get that, if I go to my Binance account, so you can see here, uh, I have an account, I've already kind of deposited some amount of assets that we can use for, for trading, for demo trading. So here, since I'm going to be uh, demoing AVAX BTC, I have some amount of uh, AVAX tokens and BTC tokens in this account already. Uh, to set up an API key, I would go on the, uh, under the user icon under the API management section. Here it will ask me to create an API key. So it's pretty straightforward. You just give it a name, so a new key, then I hit create. Uh, I won't do this now because it's, it's going to ask me for security verifications, but it's pretty much, that's what you do. It will ask you to, uh, for your 2FA code, it will ask you for an email code. Um, actually, I'll show you what it looks like. So that's what it looks like. Uh, I'm just not going to do this now because I've already set up the keys. Uh, you can see here, I already have two API keys that I've set up. So the first one is uh, Hummingbot Trading. So this one I set up, this key, it's enabled for trading. So by default, when you set up a new API key, it will already be enabled for, for trading. So you don't have to change anything. Um, and then I also set up a second uh, API key. So if you recall, when I was explaining how our Hummingbot Miner system works, uh, that one will use, uh, recommend users to use a read-only API key. So that's what allows us to retrieve like order data in order to use that to determine the rewards that you're earning. And so here you can see this API key is, it's, uh, it's only read enabled uh, and trading is not enabled. And how you would set your API key so that it's read-only when you create the one by default, you would just simply just edit restrictions, uncheck, enable spot margin trading and then hit save. And that's how you would set up your read only API key. So uh, once you set those up, uh, make sure to keep note of your, obviously your API key and then the secret key because that you will need that later when you're setting up the bot and the humming bot minor uh, configuration setup. So if I go back to humming bot, uh, when I hit connect Binance, it's going to ask me for my API key and API key secret. And you can also kind of see how Hummingbot works. What it does is whenever you are trying to config something or set something up, it will basically ask you a series of questions and you, which you want to answer in response to. And that's how you'll, you'll set up the bot. So in this case, I'll paste in my API key and then next my API secret. And there, uh, so it says I'm now connected to Binance. So when I input that as well, uh, it also checked and verified that the API key is working. So if I go back to connect, you can see it, it's, uh, it's, it's, they've been added and it's been confirmed. So if, if for some reason you input the wrong API key or there's an error when you input it, it will give you a warning and say that that's an invalid API key. And so this will, uh, at least confirm that the API key that you've set is actually valid and you can proceed to kind of using the bot for that exchange. So the next thing I do is I'll set up a strategy. So uh, the next command I'll be running is create. So here you can see um, it's gonna ask me what strategy I want to run. So these are kind of some of the strategies we have available in Hummingbot right now. So um, things like AMM ARB, so what this is, is basically uh, trades between automated market makers such as uh, you know, Balancer, and we're also releasing uh, 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 Uniswap soon. So uh, can, you can trade basically ARB, those AMMs against centralized exchanges. Um, arbitrage, similar, but it can be, it doesn't have to be an AMM. It's, you can ARB between different exchanges, or between centralized exchanges or between even DEXs, basically between any kind of exchange that we have connectors to. Uh, Celo ARB, again, that's that's uh, similar to AMMR, but it's for the Celo blockchain. Uh, and other things, cross-exchange market making. Um, I probably don't need to go into this too much detail. 
again, that's kind of a, a, a strategy where uh, you use kind of one exchange such as Binance, a liquid exchange, and use that to kind of uh, uh, to provide liquidity for less liquid exchanges. So use that kind of like let's hedge transactions if you're market making on say a DEX or something that's kind of less liquid. Uh, perp market making, it's uh, basically market making for perps on Binance. And the one we'll actually be demoing today is just pure market making. So this is normal market making. What that means is I'll be creating buy and sell orders for trading pair on a single exchange. Uh, and so that's the one we'll be using for uh, the AVAX BTC uh, pair. And this is the strategy that basically most people use uh, when they're participating in Hong but Miner. So then I'll specify which exchange I want to uh, trade on. Let me zoom in again some more. Hopefully you guys can see this. So I hit Binance. And next, it's going to ask me for which trading pair I want to trade. So I'll put in the AVAX uh, BTC pair. The next, it's going to ask me like for my, my bid and ask spreads. So bid and ask spreads is basically when you place buy orders, you, you place them at a lower price than your sell orders. So actually if we flip back to the Binance account, you can kind of see, uh, we'll pull up the AVAX BTC pair. So you can see here, I, I'm sure, I, I guess most of you are probably familiar with obviously this screen. So on the buy sides here, these are the buy orders on the bottom um, represented by the, the green kind of data. And then these are the sell orders. Um, uh, and then one thing we do make reference to is the is called mid-market price. So here, mid-market price is basically the average of the best bid price and the best ask price. And that's kind of a reference, kind of like a midpoint that's kind of a reference point that we'll be using for, for mark making uh, here. And uh, when, uh, when, when we go back to Hummingbot, when it's asking for bid, bid spread, what that means is kind of what's the, um, what's the percentage price in price terms lower than mid price do you want to set your uh, buy price for, for that order? And conversely for the ask orders, uh, you specify a percentage, like, that's a percentage above mid price that you'll be willing to uh, sell, uh, sell your assets. Uh, in this case, you could kind of see uh, this AVA, AVAX of BTC market is pretty tight. Um, and this is uh, jumping up a little bit ahead, but if you kind of want to get an idea of like what kind of spreads to use, um, I, obviously you could kind of just kind of see here what the markets uh, is, or what, the, what the current best bids and Ask spreads are, but one thing that I think is useful is if you actually go to our Hummingbot Miner uh, site, and if you pick like some of these markets, like AVAX BTC, you can actually see uh, right now this shows you um, currently um, in the most recent kind of snapshot of the market um, that we have. Uh, let me refresh this. Uh, so you can see here there's 14 bots active. And this is their kind of across those 14 bots that are currently active on this particular minute in the Hummingbot Miners campaign. You can kind of see what the uh, the average weighted average bid ask spreads are. So here they're using it's one 1.4 percent. Um, that's actually uh, kind of wider than the market, but this at least gives you a, a, an idea of uh, what other folks are doing. If you uh, uh, at least the ones that are participating in in the Hummingbot Miners campaign. So if I go back here, um, I just would just say 1% for now. Um, so I've placed my bid ask at 1% spread and I'll use the same for the ask spread. So uh, this is my, uh, for my sell order. So I'll put one. Next is going to ask me how often do I want to cancel and replace my bids. So what Hummingbot does is it always constantly updates prices. So it checks prices, queries, what's the current uh, market is like and it'll update your orders. Uh, so here we tip, uh, we see our users typically use anywhere from you know 30 to 60 seconds. So that's how, how frequently it will uh, update your orders and pricing. So we would just use 30. Next, it's going to ask me what's the amount, the minimum, the amount of AVAX uh, per order I'll be using. So what this shows here is 
Uh, so Binance, as well as um, most other exchanges, they typically have a minimum order size of, of roughly around ten dollars. So what that means is like um, uh, if you place orders below that uh, amount, uh, those orders will be invalid and you will not be able to place them uh, on on Binance. Uh, so minimum says it's kind of a, an amount that's kind of uh, that quite kind of. Uh, is, is equivalent to what the minimum size is. So you would want to place uh, orders uh, above that. And this is also depends on like your inventory. Obviously, if you wanna trade more assets, the amount of orders of AVAX you're gonna uh, specify for each order will be larger. If you wanna start smaller, you can start something closer to the minimum. In this case, let's just use, uh, let's say 10. And then here we have something called ping pong feature. So this is, uh, uh, we have a number of advanced features. So this is uh, uh, one of them. Uh, I'll just hit no for now. I think uh, uh, we probably don't need to go into this in too much detail. I'll just show you kind of uh, where to go if you want more information on what that, what that means. Um, if we go back to the doc site uh, under advanced market making strategy, market making section, you can see there's that ping pong uh, kind of uh, mode here, how it kind of works. And uh, just since it came up, I'll just give you a very brief overview of what this is. This is basically a, a mode where it tries to keep in balance like your buys and sells. So basically uh, whenever you have a buy, whenever you're market making, so part one, you create a buy and, and sell order. If one side gets filled, um, it will stop creating orders for that side here. It will only create, uh, in this example, sell orders uh, until a sell order is eventually filled. And then once that sell order is filled, it's kind of like balanced, as in you've you've had uh, you've completed one buy transaction and completed one sell transaction, it will revert to placing both. This is kind of a way to help manage kind of making sure uh, your relatively equal frequency buying and selling, because one thing one of the risks of market making is uh, typically you may uh, inventory risk is you may get swung around. So if the market's going one way or the other, either maybe you you buy when the market's selling off. And so you keep buying and you're accumulating assets when the market's going down. All the way around is um, maybe you're selling when the market's going up and you're selling too often, too quickly. So we have certain features that kind of are intended to mitigate that risk. So you can see that here. Uh, so ping pong is one of them, um, but that's basically uh, uh, designed to kind of help, help uh, avoid some, some of the risks of market making. Here, uh, we'll just go with no default for now. We'll just go with uh, just the basic kind of configs. And then the last thing is I'll just uh, name my uh, configuration file. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. So you can see it's pretty straightforward. Um, we've literally already set up a, a bot. We could actually get this to start trading. So if we go to the uh, back to the Binance screen here, you can see in this market, um, I don't have any open orders. If I hit start, it should be, you can see the right screen started logging. Uh, it's created orders here. Uh, and let's see, if I go back to here, you can see it's already created uh, the sell order. Uh, I think I got one message. Okay, I don't have enough uh, inventory for the, for the buy order. Um, so it's only created the sell order. Uh, so let's see what's going on. Um, so uh, other commands that are helpful here. Um, let me see. So you can see it's already started creating orders. Uh, actually, one more thing here. You can see it's a sell side. So if we look here, you can see uh, there's my order. Um, it's 1% uh, spread is relatively wide. So that's why it's kind of fairly deep in the order book. Um, and that's kind of where it is right now. Um, other useful commands in Hummingbot, if we hit status, you can see here. Oh, so this account doesn't have any BTC at the moment. So that's why it was only making the, the sell order. So when I hit status, it shows me kind of my available balance is for, and then it also shows me which orders I currently have outstanding. Um, in this case, let me try to sell some AVAX just on market, just so that we can show 
it's um, a cell. So we can show having orders on both sides. So I hit cell. Okay. So now if I go back to my bot, let me just stop it first. Okay, I'll hit start. It's there. Uh, if you go back, it's created orders. If I hit status, you see now it's created a buy and sell order. If we go back here, you can see both of them now. You can see I have a buy order for 10 AVAX tokens and a sell order for 10 AVAX tokens on AVAX BTC. And you can see it's just like that. It's already started uh, basically trading. And then because we specified uh, every 30 seconds, it will just continue refreshing every 30 seconds from there on. And uh, if your orders get filled, then it will just continue replenishing them and re refreshing them. You can see here, my buy orders right here right now. So that's basically it. Um, other important uh, kind of uh, functions here or, or commonly used functions, if we hit history, you can see your trading history. Obviously, we don't have any uh, trading history yet, but I did set up this bot this morning. So uh, I'll show you what it kind of looks like here. So when I zoom in, uh, when I hit history, so here, so I started this bot this earlier today. All the times are in UTC time. So that's why it's kind of uh, not, uh, not synced with my, my computer time, but this is uh, from just a few hours ago this morning. So this bot was up running for about an hour and 20 minutes earlier today. Uh, when, when I hit history, I can see this information. You can see it's actually um, bought trades. So that kind of explains why I didn't have any BTC uh, when we first started. Uh, it actually bought uh, AVAX tokens earlier this morning. You can kind of see that the trading volume, the trades it, it did, what the average prices were. And you can also see kind of the change um, here. So uh, I, I started off with 36.9 AVAX tokens. I had bought 38. That's why my current inventory is 70, roughly 75 and my Bitcoins were spent. So uh, I was pretty close to zero after those four trades. You can see here, um, uh, as a result, uh, you can see the mix. So it went from 50-50 mix to 100% base asset AVAX tokens as a result of those trades. And lastly here, of course, important performance. Uh, so this bot in, in, in about you know, an hour and 20 minutes uh, did some trades and actually managed to have some, some positive uh, trades. So it made a return of 0.25% in about an hour and 20 minutes earlier today. So that's uh, pretty good. Um, so that's pretty much it for Hummingbot. Again, a few resources um, to share with you. Our docs page, so there's a lot more things you can do with it. So. Even the basic strategies, the basic configs are totally fine to use, but um, there's definitely a lot more power uh, that you can, you can unlock by kind of uh, digging into some of the advanced market making features. We also have some kind of YouTube videos explaining some of these. So definitely welcome you to, to take a look at those if, to get more uh, information on that. And, and of course you can join our discord to ask more questions there. Um, so I guess, uh, so next part, uh, I'll show you what, Hummingbot miner liquidity mining is all about. So I kind of gave you a bit of a preview when we uh, referred to it. So you can see here um, on our platform, just to help you understand kind of what's going on here. Um, uh, we just walked through what kind of some of these things mean. So right now there's about th just under $13,000 of rewards available for this week. And those are the total reward pool across the different pairs. So we have a number of campaigns running at the moment. So um, the Avalanche campaign you can see here. Um, and so this is the total war pool across all markets right now. And here, active bots, currently there's 384 active bots. So, um, so those, there's, uh, and these are, these are um, total bots per market. So uh, basically it's, you can see here, active bots per market. This is just the aggregate across all of them. The next column is current liquidity. So what current liquidity is, this is the amount of open orders across all the participants as of right now. So you can see here on the AVAX, AVAX uh, Avalanche tokens, there's roughly six, 16,000, call it like 25,000 of, of liquidity. 
So just for the Avalanche campaign, there's about 25,000. This means that currently right now, there's a, across all the different users and bots, they've, they've added 25,000 of, of depth into the order books as of right now. And then here, of course, the important uh, is kind of showing what's the yield. So what this corresponds with is basically what's the total reward pool um, based on, and how does that compare to the total amount of orders in the order books right now? And how do we look at that in yield terms? So that's basically what this is showing here. Um, if you wanted to actually calculate this number, basically this 13K divided by seven, so daily, uh, the daily rewards divided by current liquidity, that gets you to this 0.92% uh, yield. So that's kind of a measure of like the, the amount of rewards available to the participants who are eligible to earn and share that reward. Um, one thing to note here is uh, obviously this doesn't capture any PL from the bots. So like for these orders, obviously um, uh, a, lot, a lot of the time it will result in trades. Uh, so just note here, this yield corresponds with just the rewards versus liquidity and doesn't actually correspond with the profitability of the bot. So that's kind of, kind of a, a separate thing. And how you first get set up uh, um, in Hollywood Miners is yeah, when, when you first go to the site for the first time, it will, uh, it will, there'll be an option to uh, sign up. So you basically just enter your email and then sign up. And then to, to get set up and start uh, recording uh, my activity on, on this uh, system, I would just go to uh, settings section. And then here I had already enabled the Binance account, but if I hadn't, this would say uh, disabled. So like that, um, but here, what I've entered is I've entered uh, that read-only key. So just uh, be mindful uh, again here, uh, we only need your read-only API key. So that's uh, what you would enter here and make sure you don't enter your trade enabled API key. So once you enter your API keys, it will start basically, uh, uh, the system will start aggregating some of your data. So if you go to like kind of dashboard, you can see here, um, I'm already earning rewards uh, based on um, activity for, for trading in specifically for this trading bot. This was for the AVAX uh, BTC uh, uh, pair. And uh, kind of to show you how this kind of this kind of works, um, basically like um, if I pull up, let's say that pair again. So if I click on this market, so this is more detail, uh, you can see here, these are the weekly rewards available for this trading pair. Uh, again, these are kind of some of the terms. So the maximum spreads that are eligible. And then these are the different snapshots. And uh, you can see here that um, we have one minute snapshots. So how you actually earn rewards is um, for each minute, we take a snapshot of everyone's orders. And then for everyone who's participated and submitted eligible orders within that minute, we divide the reward pool between uh, those users. And so if I click on this, uh, actually, let me find, uh, let me actually go here. Uh, uh, I had disabled the bot before we started, so I don't have any rewards right now. Um, but here, if I click on uh, the last minute, I did earn a reward on this bot, which was about a half an hour ago or so. I'll click on this one. So here's kind of how it breaks down. Um, so for this particular minute, um, so you could think of them as kind of like, the blocks equivalent of a blockchain. So this on this particular snapshot, uh, in this in this in this trading pair, there was about ten thousand, just under ten thousand of of liquidity. So if I go to the bottom for this for this uh, minute, there's about five six cents of rewards available. So that six cents of rewards will be split between all these eligible orders that uh, participated in this in this minute. And then how it kind of gets allocated between uh, those eligible orders. You can see here um, on my side, I had uh, the orders this bot had uh, participated in or it was creating. It had about 120 of, 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 uh, of, of inventory that it was kind of uh, creating orders for. So uh, there's kind of two factors that determine how, how my rewards are, are split um, or how, I, how it's allocated. The first one is, um, the total size. So obviously the, the larger my order size is, the larger uh, 
proportion of the reward pool I'm able to share. Uh, the second way it's weighted is the uh, by spreads. So uh, the tighter my spreads are, the larger weighting my orders will, will have versus uh, orders at a, a wider uh, spread. So in this case, uh, my ask order was actually slightly tighter, 1% uh, than the weighted average across the uh, all the participants. So here, my orders have slightly more weight than say the average the average order. Um, so those are the kind of two things that are used to determine rewards. And the other thing, um, so for to maximize the amount of rewards like you're you're earning, um, that's why uh, typically we automate the bots. Um, so yeah, so obviously the, the more the more minutes you're participating in, so the more consistently you're creating orders, um, the more rewards you're able to earn. So typically our top users basically set up their bots and they're, they're pretty much running all the time. Uh, other thing I'll just mention here. So uh, if you go to dashboard, so you can see my total earnings uh, this week. Uh, so uh, again, I only ran this bot for about an hour early this morning. So it earned about eight cents in that hour. And on top, again, as I showed you in the history, the bot also made profits. So in aggregate, I made obviously my, my p and from the bot and also earn the rewards. Um, so I think this is good for anyone who kind of wants to get started in trying out market making and quant trading, because in addition to like, you know, obviously trading a current p and on the bot, um, you'll be getting basically an extra, extra income stream from the rewards that you're earning uh, in the campaign because of for, for creating orders. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So that's, uh, we went through that rather quickly. Um, I think like uh, we have a few more minutes, so definitely happy to answer any questions you guys may have. So feel free to just uh, post on the chat also, or just go on mute and, uh, and uh, ask any questions you may have. I guess while I'm kind of waiting for, for some questions, you can uh, some other stats uh, here. I actually ran this analysis earlier this morning when I ran this, um, just looking at the different order books. So for example, for the AVAX Bitcoins, um, our, actually, our users are counting for, you can see the green bars uh, and the blue bars. So these are the, the buy side order book and the green are the miners and the blue is all of Binance. And similarly on the ass side, red are our miners and um, uh, yellow, is overall Binance. So this is kind of interesting. This kind of shows, uh, in, in, uh, actually in, in, in the horizontal axis, this is kind of buckets by spread. So what this is, is all orders between zero to like 0.5% spread. And this second bucket, whoops, uh, let me reset that, uh, is kind of orders between 0.5 to 1%. So you can see here, uh, our miners uh, with only $600 of rewards per week are actually accounting for a pretty meaningful amount of the order book. So you can see how kind of how effective this is in providing liquidity uh, for for this market, and you can see kind of the same uh, for uh, AVAX USDT. Uh, so you can see it's again the miners, how many miners are accounting for a pretty meaningful amount of order book depth, and here's the one for um, uh, AVAX BNB, same same thing as well. Uh, so the question is, if there are if there are 100 US dollars daily rewards and there are 20 bots running daily, will they get uh, $5 each per day? Um, kind of uh, very uh, roughly, yes. Uh, so if, if they're all using the same settings, so if they all have the same like a size and spread, which is say uh, in a very simple example, then yes, uh, they would earn exactly the same. Um, in that case, but if within those 20 bots, if some of them were creating, uh, were had we're using larger sizes, so maybe they say they say double, you know, um, the order sizes of everyone else, then they'd be getting closer to like you know ten dollars because their order sizes are double, and then um, and then the rest get you know the remainder. Uh, similarly, like also with with spreads, uh, if they're placing orders with tighter spreads, that does affect the weighting as well. Um, and the way the reason it's kind of done this way is obviously um, uh, it's kind of intended to align. The rewards with the risks that market makers are taking. So obviously, the first thing is the more consistently you're placing orders, uh, obviously the more risk there, there is. Um, so that's why we have split up the rewards into different minutes, uh, so that you can accumulate more rewards 
the more consistently you're placing orders. Secondly, obviously, if you're using larger amounts, uh, you're exposing potentially exposing to more market risk. And then also, if you're trading with tighter spreads, it's riskier. Um, so that's why it's kind of weighted that way. Um, so that it's intended to increase rewards uh, when when uh, uh, commensurate with any like in increased uh, amount of risk uh, you're taking. Um, hi, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yep. Hey, hey, Jesse. Yep, can hear you. Hey, thanks. Um, yeah, awesome presentation. Thank you so much. Um, I have not done liquidity mining before. Um, I know I've heard that with some of the markets, the fees, the gas required can eat away at profits for, for doing um, kind of a spread mining, how you okay. described it. But maybe with Avalanche, uh, I guess the, the fees are much lower. Can you describe a little bit what sure. it's like to do this kind of tool with Avalanche versus some of the other markets? Sure, that, that, that's a good question. Um, so here it's actually, um, because we're actually um, uh, operating on a centralized exchange versus say uh, liquidity mining on, on let's say uh, Uniswap or, or Balancer, we're actually not incurring any, any, any uh, blockchain fees because you're just actually trading in the, in, in the order book on Binance. But what you are incurring is like, if you do trade, then um, you're probably incurring maker fees. So uh, in this case, uh, at the very least maker fees are typically lower than taker fees. So if you, if you do like have trades that are filled, you will be incurring maker fees um, uh, on that. That being said, like if, if you can still earn rewards, like uh, I, I mentioned it at the very beginning, it's like if you create orders, but you never trade, then you won't be earning, you won't be actually incurring any expenses at all. Um, but if you do incur the typical maker fees, that also has an advantage typically, like if you have like on a higher fee tier on Binance, obviously you're at a bit of more of an advantage because your costs of participating are a bit lower. Um, so that's, that, that is one thing there. So in this case, like um, one thing to kind of help against that is when you set your spreads. So obviously the wider you set your spreads, the more uh, potential you have to kind of uh, more profit potential you, you could have if you do trade. So one thing you would be mindful of is make sure you set your spreads wider than your kind of like your fees. So if you have, let's say, if you have, let's say typical 0.1% uh, trading fee, uh, obviously you wouldn't want to set your spreads lower than that because every time you trade, you're basically uh, losing your spread in fees. So you would typically want to set it wider. So something like, 0.2% or 0.3%. So that gives you a bit more margin to kind of recoup that feedback. Yep. Thanks for the question. Anyone else have any other questions? I guess if there if there are no other questions, I think we can uh, call it uh, here. Um, we could end, end the presentation here. Again, feel free to uh, reach out to our, our team on Discord. So I think here's some useful links here. Simply just discord.hummingbot.io, uh, docs.hummingbot.io, and the Miner app is Miner. Actually, let me change this. This is actually, we changed the URL. So that's a big change for us. It's actually miner.hummingbot.io now. Um, so here are some references for you to go to and feel free to uh, yeah, join our Discord and chat with the team.